As each level is completed, the water in the perimeter moat is then raised and the next level of blocks are floated into place on the large steps that had been cut into the rocky outcrop. Martin, the pyramid building project manager, now had the problem that the height of the pyramid build was reaching above the walls of the surrounding precinct moat, which means the blocks now had to be lifted into position and not just floated. Alex, Martin's understudy, could see that he was bothered. Why don't you just build a ramp? Then the blocks can be just dragged up to the higher levels. On low height projects, said Martin, this is a good idea, Alex. But on a pyramid this size, millions of tons of material would need quarrying. Then carrying up the ramp and compacting, and then the whole ramp would need heightening and lengthening every time we start a new layer. The ramp would be a bigger building project than the pyramid itself. The kind of ramp you're talking about would be over a mile long. And where's the space to put a mile long ramp? Okay, said Alex. How about a ramp that goes around the outside of the pyramid as it's built? Well, that solves one problem but creates another. If the pyramid was surrounded by ramp material, we couldn't take our measurements and check we're keeping it level. You've also got the problem of space. Dragging blocks means long ropes and teams of men out in front. How do they get around the corner? I mean, maybe they could push them, but that is much harder than dragging them. Well, how about a ramp on the inside of the pyramid? Oh, Alex, can you imagine how difficult it would be to drag blocks through smoky tunnels? <coughs> These tunnels would need serious infrastructure to keep them safe. So like granite ceiling beams. Those are expensive and have to come from Aswan. That's 500 miles away, Alex. Even worse, they'd also need to be big enough for the teams to actually move in. The tunnels would need to be designed as a corbel arch. That is a massive engineering challenge. Is the pyramid not hard enough as it is? Besides, you still have the problem of navigating the corners. That is a fair point, said Alex. No, we're going to have to find another way. Martin looked down towards the Nile and saw the series of lock gates being opened and shut with the blocks floating easily up to the higher plateau. Hmm. Perhaps we can raise our blocks in a similar way, said Martin. That's an interesting idea. It's certainly worth a go. So Martin had a pair of wide simple locks built and floated the blocks up out of the precinct moat using the water coming down from the outcrop to fill the locks. He also used the papyrus bale idea to speed up the process of lowering and raising the water. This meant that delivering the blocks to the building site was not totally dependent on those with strength and stamina to place huge blocks onto sledges and drag them uphill day in and day out. However, as the structure grew, the amount of people needed to open the gates was beginning to put a strain on the available workforce. Martin knew his teams were being pushed to the limit, but to get extra staff would be hugely expensive. More accommodation, more food, more wine and sanitation. But if he didn't make it easier on his current staff, he knew that he'd exhaust them and word would soon spread about the working conditions and then the workforce would start to dwindle as they avoid coming back next season. What Martin needed was a way to raise blocks even higher without the men being overworked and at the same time keep morale high. The question was how?